Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and my apologies to the House for missing the start uh, of this debate. It started a list, little earlier than I anticipated, and I was sitting on a bus in Millbank. Um, and so thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, for calling me to speak, and uh, thank you and congratulations to uh, my honourable friend, the member for Dulwich and West Norwood, for, uh, for leading on this debate and to the Backbench uh, Business Committee for delivering it. Um, I'm speaking at... Uh, towards the end of the debate, so I'll try not to repeat the many excellent contributions uh, that honourable members have already made. But like so many other members of this House, I've had parents contacting me in great distress at the lack of adequate acute services as their children are in crisis. Uh, I had one uh, parent who um, was so worried about um, her daughter um, who's going to have to spend yet another weekend, because this was the first period of crisis that she had, another weekend in the children's ward of the local hospital, as there were no specialist beds available. Madam Deputy Speaker, the children's ward is not a safe place uh, for a young person uh, uh, in, in a mental health crisis, and it's not fair on the staff and the other children in that ward uh, to have to um, support her either. She needed to be in a specialist bed, but in London there are too few tier, to, tier 4 beds for young people. Um, I had another distressing experience uh, of a young man who um, needed to go to hospital urgently, um, but because of a disconnect between the police, the ambulance services and the other services, um, it was, took two attempts in the same day to draw him from his house and get him to the safe place that he needed to be in. Added trauma, added distress, worsening his already critical health situation. Um, we are seeing some improvements locally, to be fair. We are seeing, uh, we are promised, added tier four beds uh, and better joined up thinking between services. But I have to say, Madam De De Deputy Speaker, this is a small increase from a very, very low bar. The additional problem is the break in consistent service when a child in crisis uh, suffers further as they hit their 18th birthday. They lose one set of services, the next, the adult services may or may not pick up at the same place. This does not make it easy for that child, for her family and for those trying to support her. I want to give credit to those who work in the public and the voluntary sector, who support and heal those young people, but whose job is made, being made difficult because of the difficult funding situation and the lack of adequate joined up thinking. Like many other honourable members, like all honourable members here today, I want to thank uh, the excellent work of uh, the Youth Select Committee, the British Youth Council and the many MYPs across the country. Earlier this year, I met Hounslow's MYP, uh, Tafumi Amisori, uh, and she told, she told me about the history of this debate, how the young people the, across the country have voted that mental health should be the top uh, agenda issue for discussion uh, among MIPs and the, the top issue that they wanted to bring to us. She said to me, the future of tomorrow cannot possibly get to a stage where, they can, where young people can rise to their full potential when they're being failed by this current generation. I think she means us. They lack the support they need for mental health. Every time we say we need more support, mental health services simply get cut. One of the UK Youth Parliament's national campaigns is, you know, they only come along one a year, once a year. We have to treat young people's demands seriously. She's going to be holding sessions in her school to promote more education in this matter, and all credit to her. Madam Deputy Speaker, earlier this year in July, I met a group of school heads, primary and secondary.